Uh, I'm Dr. Paul Lehman. I work in a clinic using natural therapies to treat people and I regard any restriction of vitamin and mineral um, uh, production and availability as being very serious and can damage people. Uh, we, we use um, huge numbers of supplements for our patients that uh, we feel very definitely need it and uh, they respond very well with them. Most people in Britain today believe that the European Parliament works in a similar way to Westminster. So many thousands of British citizens have written to their MPs and MEPs protesting these and other directives. But do MEPs actually have the power to change the food supplements and herbal directives or indeed anything? So what are MEPs for? Well, I'll tell you. MEPs are here to vote and to vote often and to vote regularly. Sometimes we vote up to 450 times in the space of 80 minutes. Now I have to confess, hands up, I don't know what's going on half the time. I haven't even read all of the documents, so massive are they? Now it could be that my fellow MEPs down there are all Albert Einsteins and all absolutely understand what's going on, but I suspect that's not the case. In fact, it's rather like paying monkeys, because what happens is the civil servants draw up the list, and if it's vote number 58 and the piece of paper says vote yes, you vote yes, and if it's number 59 and it says vote no, you vote no. It is an absolute farce. It is a complete sham masquerading as democracy. Okay. In 15 minutes' time, we have to go down to the European Parliament and to fulfil our function as members of the European Parliament, which means we have to vote. So what we're about to do now is with our assistants, who've done a massive amount of reading and work behind the scenes, they are effectively going to tell us what to do. Look at it. Oh, look how many votes there are. What have we got? Yeah. Votes. yeah. So there's about... In fact, there's a... Now look at that. This, this, this is a classic example of EU voting. There we have 40 individual different amendments that we're expected to vote for on block. Now I defy any man or woman down in that chamber to understand all those 40 amendments and make a balanced decision. It's just impossible. Laws of the European Union are drafted not by the Euro Parliament, but by the EU Commission. One of three powerful forums in which the true might of the Union resides. Members of these forums are not elected to their positions, nor, we are told, will they ever be. When cornered, politicians and public servants routinely tell the British that the EU is just a trading partnership. Yet, underneath the surface, a different picture has emerged. In 2001, a market trader was convicted for selling a pound of bananas weighed using British imperial measures instead of grams and kilos. British District Judge Morgan, in passing judgment upon the hapless metric martyr, stated, we are now living under a new legal order. The 1972 European Communities Act was a one-off, not an ordinary treaty, but a new way of life. These are new constitutional powers. The British Parliament surrendered its sovereignty in 1972. European laws have overriding force with priority over our British laws. The articles on the supremacy of the British Parliament are now only of historical perspective. They are non-binding. We asked constitutional expert John Bingley whether our politicians were entitled to abandon the rule of law by handing over the powers of British governments to a foreign power. The answer is simple, no. We have much written constitution which is not really fully appreciated in this country. And these documents, the Bill of Rights and Declaration of Rights, along with Magna Carta and many other legal instruments, make it quite plain that allegiance is owed to the Queen uh, and that allegiance is returned by her through the contract of her coronation oath to the people and that is not something which may be broken and our politicians are not entitled to break their oaths of office. It follows therefore that no government with or without a popular mandate may transfer sovereignty on a temporary or permanent basis to a foreign power that owes no allegiance to the British Crown and is unaccountable to the British people. The new European justice system currently being introduced into the UK is known as Corpus Juris 
literally body of law. Corpus Juris is designed completely and permanently to overhaul the British justice system and will include the following. The scrapping of trial by jury. Henceforth you will face a state appointed judge who will pronounce you guilty or not guilty. The scrapping of habeas corpus. You are liable to summary arrest without charge. Under corpus juris you can be detained without charge or any evidence being presented against you for up to nine months. The scrapping of innocent until proven guilty. Henceforth, a citizen must prove his innocence against the combined machinery of the state. The scrapping of double jeopardy or not being tried for the same offence twice. Under EU sanction, Jack Straw, while Home Secretary, gave prosecutors leave to appeal not guilty verdicts if desired. Technically, this could be done repeatedly until the required conviction is secured. The scrapping of non-disclosure. Henceforth, under corpus juris, any previous convictions you have will be made available to the court before your trial begins. There is no presumption of innocence. The French system, or the continental system broadly, the droit administratif, uh, places everything, the subject of the uh, foreign or continental countries, uh, have no rights at all. An Englishman has full liberty, uh, except under the due restriction of law. Under the droit administratif, uh, you have no rights except those that are allowed to you by the state. This fundamental difference is very important because it's now leading, uh, with the takeover of the EU situation, we are now leading to a state whereby we too will come under the droit administrative. And this will stop us having a right to trial by jury. And that in itself is the back door to a dictatorial arrangement. The officials themselves we, we learn, and we only learn it step by step, have total immunity from everything, uh, that is, from the criminal law throughout the member states. They seem to have extraordinary powers, but as again, as I say, nobody knows quite what. Then, gradually, incrementally, they acquire extra powers. They acquire powers to look at terrorism. What they are precisely, we're not quite sure. They also have powers to look at fraud. What they are, we're not quite sure. For centuries, it has been the British citizens' most basic right to vote in 100% of the members of Parliament who govern their country, or alternatively, vote them all out and sack them if they don't perform. For instance, the basic principle that one Westminster Parliament can always change what the past Parliament did. That's the core of democracy that you can elect a new parliament and then you can have a new law. This core doesn't exist in the EU and it doesn't exist with the constitution we are building now. As more and more EU sanctioned taxation hits the British taxpayer, from local council tax increases to higher national insurance levies, how many even appreciate the true price of what European Union membership has actually cost Britain. People don't realise that the cost to Britain is 1.3 million pounds per hour, every hour, every day, every year. And the way that figure will go is upwards, not downwards. We every year give them a nice big fat Christmas cake, costing billions of pounds. And they decide how many crumbs they're going to give us back. They don't flannel me, but I'm unfortunately a flanneling a lot of people in this country. The Europeans have far higher levels of taxation. There'll be VAT, can you believe it, on food. There'll be VAT on house purchase. There'll be VAT on public transport. There'll be VAT on children's clothing. There'll be VAT on funerals. There's no limit to the greed of the bureaucrat. And the other point, of course, is the sheer financial point, that this place is thick with institutional corruption. You could now buy a cheap airline ticket to come to Strasbourg for about £45 return. When you get here, you're reimbursed nearly £800 for the cost of that flight. Now, this has been going on for the last 20 years, and, of course, what's happened is that our members of the European Parliament simply haven't 